Amo Sonyoike is a hairdresser with PNC Salon, an upmarket beauty salon that offers hair styling and nail services to its clients. On average, the salon caters for 30 clients in a day, with most of the patrons coming in for hair styling, which costs anything from 250 Kenya shillings. However, it has not been all rosy for Amos and his colleagues. They have on numerous occasions been forced to endure huge losses in their business following incessant blackouts that cut across the country. When we get power shortages, eh? It affects, it really affects our business. Because you can see, we use the dryers, we have the tongs, and there's no way you can use like generator because we really need a lot of power. Following an over-reliance on hydroelectricity, Kenya has been suffering from chronic power shortages. High power tariffs and frequent outages due to its limited generation capacity is nothing new in this part of the world. Further to that is an over-reliance on water sources at the expense of renewable alternatives. Energy is very critical even on uh, driving the economic uh, growth so that we can be able to realize our vision 2030. And uh, in recognition of that, the Ministry of Energy has also been very sensitive together with the other stakeholders so that we can, uh, we can be able to meet the requirement of uh, energy. We are aware, of course, that um, hydro energy is weather dependent and at times you will not be able to get it at the time you need it. As part of a wider scale to enhance its power supply, the country is looking at other renewable technologies to meet its energy needs. This week, Kenjan commissioned a 5.1 megawatt wind farm at the Gong Hills as part of a five-year plan to inject 500 megawatts into the national grid by 2013. Uh, this is just the first one, the first phase of 5.1 megawatts. We have uh, the second phase, which is going to be 6.8 megawatts, funded by the same Belgian government, and we have 13.8 megawatts, which is funded by the Spanish government. So a total of 21 megawatts on the same site, on this site. So we will be having 25 megawatts within the next uh, one year or so. Kenjan expects to increase the wind energy capacity to 25.5 megawatts by the end of 2012 as it gears to raise overall capacity to 3,000 megawatts by 2028. There is a 300 uh, megawatt wind plant which is earmarked to be commissioned by 2012 and that's being developed by Electrocana Wind. And uh, nearer, nearer the time when we could possibly have the impact of Ranino. We have a 120 megawatt um, thermal plant which is being developed by Kenjin and we expect by end of November we should start having the output of that. We've got uh, three power plants, thermal power plants in Nairobi and we expect that uh, in the next 18 months we should be on, on board. We reckon that the potential for wind is about 4,000 megawatts in this country. Um, we are doing wind data logging in a lot of sites. We have 12 sites that we are doing. The ministry is doing some, some further sites. And this is really just to establish the wind regime because you must be able to establish whether the wind is in the mornings or in the afternoon and what are the speeds. And that's the only way you can be able to put to determine what sort of power plant you can be able to put. In addition, the Ministry of Energy has formulated the feed-in tariffs policy on wind, biomass, small hydropower, geothermal and biogas systems to help stabilize the power supply that has been demanded for electricity rise at the rate of 10% annually against a supply growth of about 8%. By the year 2013, we are going to bring in 500 megawatts of wind power, you know, which is immune to climate change. We are also trying to bring in 280 megawatts from geothermal power by 2012, you know, which is also climate immune. So these are uh, projects we are taking the medium term uh, to prepare ourselves against any droughts in the future. And as Kenya engages its full gear in the construction of new power plants, Amas hopes this will usher in the end of the era of costly and unreliable power supply. Geothermal is good because uh, we don't have to depend on the rain, it's constant. So if, they, if it can be used, eh, that means we won't be having blackouts and customers won't be disappointed.